Today I'm talking to Ben Ward of the Beer Box Company. They were originally a mobile wedding events company, but have adapted during lockdown to create and deliver DIY cocktail packages throughout South Wales. They're also slowly branching out into the rest of the UK. Hello, Ben. Hello. How are you doing today? Yes, I'm good, thank you. I've um, taken a rare, a rare day off, so I'm, uh, I'm just enjoying doing other little bits rather than uh, driving up and down the country. So Good, good. Well, do you want to tell us a little bit more about you and kind of, I guess, the business, how it was and how you yeah. evolved into what you're doing now? Yeah, so basically, um, before we kind of went down this route with the whole DIY cocktail packages, as, you, as you've mentioned, um, we were a mobile bar service for weddings, events, festivals, things like that. Um, kind of here with our breakthrough year, um, 2020 now, obviously. this. Um, so 2020 was going to be our breakthrough year before COVID. Um, we had a lot of events, a lot of weddings planned, and it was kind of going to be our first main wedding season slash festival season where we were going to try and put a name for ourselves out there and uh, and get going with that. Yeah. Ob- obviously, COVID, um, as it has with pretty much the whole world, put a stop to that. Um, so we were kind of just sat there wondering what we could do and how we could adapt. And this is how the cocktail boxes um, were kind of developed. So for the first couple of weeks, I kind of put it out there as an idea and we started to sell quite quickly. It all happened quite fast. And before you knew it, it kind of just completely took off. And this is kind of at the moment, at least anyway, became become the main part of our business um, and definitely the busiest part of our business at the moment. So so were you doing when you say you're a, a mobile um, bar, obviously you specialised in cocktail making at the bar it wasn't just like your gen- generic beer and to be wine. honest yeah so we did do cocktails but i wouldn't say we specialized in it at all um i'd say we were we were a general service who kind of were either um either used as a service for a general bar or we would be made into a gin bar a cocktail bar a prosecco bar things like that um but the whole specializing in cocktails came around just through through the boxes mainly and now going forward this has become a main thing for for weddings and events and it seems to be what people want us to be doing as well which is good yeah so how did you um when you first got that idea how did you get how did you sort of find out well one whether it had legs and two you know how did you get it out there so people knew about it so that they could order things from you so social media um as always these days is is a massive thing for us um we already had like an okay following on facebook um in terms of a small local business um so that's quite good for us to be able to kind of put it out there but i think it was mainly it was quite a it was a city-based um kind of idea i'd say in terms of it was something that maybe started to happen in the cities quite early on during the pandemic um and then we kind of adapted it put our own spin on it we've always kind of had a theme with um like braces and bow ties and i think that into the delivery so it's a bit more personal um, and I think that helped because it was a little bit different. Um, it kind of allowed the kind of word of mouth to spread quite quicker because it wasn't your, not that there's anything wrong with it, but it wasn't your usual Amazon delivery or, or Tesco delivery. It was quite like a little occasion, um, something a little bit extra. So that helped. And then with Facebook, Instagram, things like that, it kind of spread quickly. Um, we were doing everything over kind of like bank transfer and it was all done quite manually. Um, yeah. and quite soon after we started, I, re- I realised I needed to go down the hole, um, basically putting, putting an online shop together. And who, who did that? What, what did that process look for you? Because you, I presume you haven't built an online shop before. Did you do that or did you need to get help for that? Um, yeah, How I got you... help. So what, one of my friends um, was the person who started helping me put that together um he kind of had background in that kind of field so he helped me set up the website and add the shop in at the same time um was really really useful in, in helping me get started because it was a different world to me um, mm. and I, I was actually quite reluctant to get started with it um just because i i don't know why it was like the unknown and to me yeah it's hilarious now because i can't imagine not having it now um and we took like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of bank transfers which was long in terms of trying to actually withdraw that information put it onto our spreadsheets for our delivery runs etc and here we are now with a really well-run 
online shop which kind of records all that information and I can just take it from A to B and it's all very straightforward. So what's the what's the website built with? Uh, I've got the, it in front of me. Is I'm it Shopify? Really, no, so it's um, commerce. WooCommerce. Yeah, uh, so it, yeah, the website itself, we, I've built the website on Squarespace. All oh, right. Built on Squarespace. So it's a shop that comes with that. I'll just look. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's quite it's quite popular, I think, isn't it? And how yeah. do you find that? Is it quite easy to manage that? I mean, do you manage yeah, so you I, to put new I, products and stuff on? Yeah, exactly. So um, to my to the um, person who helped me build the website's uh, dismay, I was on to him all the time trying to like get him to change things for me and do this because I just didn't understand it. But now, luckily, um, I actually took the time to try and learn about it. So it's it's just I find it crazy because I literally run the business from this. So oh, the whole business is yeah. run just from that. Um, so I can see all the analytics. I can see where the areas of interest are coming from. I can see where um, like what box is selling best, all, all sorts of things like that, which I never even knew I would be able to do. And I definitely wouldn't be able to do it if I was still doing this through bank transfers. No, that's true. That's true. It's all about streamlining the process to make yeah. it easier for you. But I guess also to make it, it eliminates errors, doesn't it? To make sure that yeah. you don't deliver stuff to somebody who didn't end up actually sending the payment exactly. through to you and, and like, that you kind can, of thing. Exactly. And it's the, I think the best thing about it, and it sounds really silly, but on the website, I've got pictures of the products that are bought. When it's done over bank transfer, the only way I'm able to go and remind myself what product they've actually ordered is this is if I need to go and search through the whole conversation on Facebook or Instagram or email or text and just to look what they've bought whereas I can just type a name in and it's there for me. I know exactly what they've ordered, I know what their address is, their contact number, their email address, it's all stored under one roof, I guess. Wow, um, that's amazing. Yeah. Um so you say that you're starting to expand outside yeah. of South Wales, because Ben lives near to me in um near Abergavenny yeah, that's right. how how far are you having to sort of deliver because you deliver them all yourself do you you don't kind of stick them in a parcel and have so with, yeah so with uh South Wales pretty much all areas of South Wales um I actually I'm pretty much in Cardiff every weekend delivering which baffles me just because it's obviously our capital city um it's kind of the most modern place with all these different kind of I'm sure there's plenty of different kinds of packages all over the place there um but yeah i seem to have custom there every single weekend so that's pretty much that's pretty much as far as i'll go in terms of delivering myself yeah um i have also been to like bridge and swansea um i go brecon way things like that but when we then have started to branch out and and, and reach out to the uk obviously then I've, I've had orders from scotland northern ireland so that's when we then have gone to the kind of postal route which i don't i don't like because I like to make sure it all gets there from A to B, and I like the personal touch. Yeah. Um, but there, there has been quite a, um, a request for it. So I kind of we're, we're still learning about this kind of part of it. Um, but it, but it's active and it's very much happening and it's going ahead and things like that, which is good. Yeah. Well, you have to. I mean, if the demand is there, you know, yeah. you're 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 stupid if you don't fulfil that demand. Yeah. What what are you? I, I can I can see how there would be logistical issues because of the Definitely. fact that you're shipping well alcohol for one thing and yeah. presumably glass containers and yeah. Yeah. and some there's some fresh um like you, you that past some of them are sort of more fresh products as well aren't they What are you yeah. finding logistically is the challenge with that if you're using a, another a courier service as so opposed I've, to I've had to adapt um in terms of with the ingredients so i do change the ingredients there's, there's hardly ever fresh ingredients that go into our postal boxes mm -hmm. um, just because even though at the minute we've managed to change it whereas i was using royal mail we now have a next day recorded delivery service which is more yeah. than clear. um even then there's still going to be delays so i can't risk it because of food hygiene and because of trading standards and things like that that's not something which i was willing to go down um so we've adapted them slightly. Christmas over Christmas period was quite easy because all of the garnishes were dried. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's it's mainly logistics with garnish. I try and be as eco friendly as possible. Yeah. Um, so when we post, all of our packaging is paper. Yeah. Um, none of it is plastic. So like when you order from some of the larger companies, which this baffles me um, because they have all the money 
and yet they'll still wrap everything in bubble wrap. Um, yeah. Whereas I'm a small local business um, who is able to not put any plastic on my products at all. And nine times out of ten, it gets here safely. And this yeah. is glass jars, so it's one of the most fragile objects you can have. Um, but yeah, so uh, that's that's the kind of route. So logistics are there, but I think if you want to if you want to go down an eco-friendly route, then you have to kind of increase that risk factor for it to work. You can't have it all. Um, yeah, yeah, so, and but I suppose you can you can do what you can to minimise the risk, can't you? Yeah, but yeah. then, what's what's your you know if something does arrive smashed, obviously I presume they just contact you and you are yeah. happy to replace it. Yeah, yeah. Is that something? I, I guess if it gets to a point where you have that happening too often, then you'll have to rethink things, won't you? But yeah. Um, yeah. That's, and that's what it's like. I think we're we're kind of looking down the route now, as opposed to me doing. I'm I'm looking. we at the minute. I'd say we are doing the same service or trying to replicate the service I do in the local deliveries and in the South Wales deliveries. I think we're trying to do the exact same thing UK wide. Mm -hmm. Going forward, I don't think it's at the moment a realistic thing, and I might have to adapt to make the product smaller because it's such yeah. a it's a, it's a large package essentially that I'm sending out, um, or it's under the bracket of between like three and twenty kilograms. So it's the same price to post as if it was twenty kilograms, even though it's around about three and a half kilograms to send. Yeah. Uh, going forward, it might be that we make a smaller version of what we're already doing that can then get sent out nationally. But I think it would probably be more effective and and more um more sustainable going forward to do that. So yeah, yeah. So how do you think? The, how are these people finding you? Because of, is it word of mouth that it's spreading over the country or are you doing anything from an online marketing point of view? What, are you doing anything there? I, don't, I think so from, from an analytics point of view, I have looked into it. So Facebook is our biggest um, market for sales. Um, after Facebook is direct searches, which is people actually type in the beerboxcompany.co.uk. After that, then is Google searches, and then it's Instagram. So they're my kind of four main platforms. Social media has been things like I think giveaways have worked quite well. Mm -hmm. um, when I do giveaways, they always get quite a, a, a nice reception. Um, collaborations with other businesses, so that they also, you know, they're introduced to my customer base. I'm introduced to theirs, new markets in that way. Um, and I'd also say. Made like it's little things, old school methods as well. So just making sure there's a business card in the box, every box that's on there, um, on the instructions, just encouraging people to maybe take a photo and to tag us in on social media. Oh, good idea. Um, yeah. Just just little little things like that. Um, promotions. So when we've kind of um, had maybe a Halloween or something like that, um, just getting them to like little discount codes or little things like that where they'll be able to have a box off or five pound off in um november and then that means that you're kind of getting double the content on social yeah. media and things like that so just little little tricks maybe more modernized methods through social media but i do i do also think you can never you can never really lose with some of the old school methods as well you're very right there and i think it's all too easy for people to just forget we, we all get kind of pulled into this digital kind of media and and everybody's yeah. telling you you've got to do this online and that and this and the other and then it is we do forget that sometimes it's the good old-fashioned even leaflet through the door yeah, that yeah. can actually you know because I mean you could do that locally couldn't you and stick a leaflet through the door coming up to maybe Easter or holiday times and party season yeah. that, that's still going to work it no, doesn't exactly. mean that, yeah yeah it's excellent and I think I think a big another one so we um our branding has helped because it's it's quite different um I actually deliver in a van um which on the side has the beer box company and all of like what we do like little bullet points of what we do but then the back of the van so the door this sounds really vain but it's not it's just the, the thing we come up with the back of the doors is just a massive cartoon picture of myself um in <laughs> embraces and bow tie behind a bar um so that catches quite a lot of attention. And when I pull up in a street or a cold sack and things like that, I'll actually have people come out of their house and just like wonder what we are and they'll ask questions. So that's like an old school method again. It's just networking, yeah. having a little chat, spending some time to talk to someone. I'm also, I have really bad eyesight. So when we, 
um, when we go delivering and it kind of starts to go darker, I'll just knock on people's doors and ask if they can direct me in the right place. And then I speak to people that way as well. Um, <laughs> Good idea. I'm selling as I'm selling, basically. <laughs> and I guess you always have a business card or a leaflet or something yeah, in the van always, that you can just... always have it in my pocket, always. Yeah, yeah. So do you do, um, do you get a lot of repeat custom from people once they've ordered from you once? Do you find you get a lot? Yeah, of this, this is what I was most surprised about. Um, I'm completely aware that we are in a situation where at the minute people's, um, people's ideas for where they can go and consume alcohol is completely limited, especially because the pubs have been shut, restaurants, etc. cetera. Um, but at the same time, I'm lucky that I've got to experience what it was kind of like outside of lockdown. Mm -hmm. We were still busy. We were still having repeat custom, like you just asked. Um, I think even when pubs reopen, when people are allowed to gather, we'll also have trade in that respect because it'll be that people can enjoy these boxes together. It's, it's more of a thing to do. Um, and with repeat custom, yeah, we've I've literally had a lot of people who have maybe ordered upwards to between ten and fifteen boxes. Um, Amazing throughout the the nine months that we've been doing this um and that's that's quite a lot of people as well um i think like on the i, I it was literally it's funny actually that we're talking about this today because only yesterday um i think we had hit 1000 orders on our website since i'd started the website that's not including all of the backed orders but that's a thousand orders on the website and that's that's orders not boxes um so that's like sometimes you have like six boxes on one order wow. um so, yeah, the repeat customer has been good. I've got a really nice broad area where I'll have repeat customers in Cardiff. I'll have repeat customers on the street I live. I'll have repeat customers in Abergavenny, things like that. So, um, yeah, it's been, that was a long, long winded answer to your question, but we have, we have got repeat custom, yes. Yeah, and do you do anything like um, email marketing or anything like that to kind of keep in touch with people once they have ordered from you do you have anything like that set up no that's that's something i want to set up like a, like a mailing list um yes so, yeah. yeah that is something we we did start that with our first ever website um and that was to do with keeping people up to date with where we'll be pitching up or what markets we'll be doing and things like that with the beer box company um but no that's something that i that's something that i do want to go there i've seen other local businesses do that um in my trade as well um, and I do think that's quite a good way of having a, a nice personal touch with your with your regular customers. Yes, because you can keep, you know, you can just keep in touch. You don't always have to be selling in an email, do you? You can just yeah, exactly. be keeping up to date and yeah. telling them your news and telling them what's happened, yeah. happened. And then at the time that they come to a point where they maybe have a birthday or a party or something and they think, exactly. oh, I know where to go. We'll go and yeah. see. We'll go and see Ben. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you're, you're yeah. right. And it's, it's nice. Like, I've, I've genuinely, like, honestly, I've made I've made friends um, during this whole kind of sidestep that we make um it's funny because during the pandemic obviously the the kind of i know we're still in the pandemic i say that but during the kind of first lockdown where it was all a bit like unknown there were some people who weren't seeing maybe other people for, for days and weeks at a time so mm -hmm. i would obviously safely deliver take steps back and we just have a nice little chat and you kind of get to know a lot of people that way um yeah. and and people were being really really supportive of, of what we were doing and I think they realised it was difficult that we had to adapt, so they were they were really kind of championing that, and that was really nice to to kind of experience as well. Yeah, I think you've probably kept a lot of people sane, to be perfectly yeah. honest. Hydrated, <laughs> and sane, yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of people rely on their uh, gin and tonic at the end yeah, of an yeah, evening yeah, after yeah. being stuck at home with kids you know, and homeschooling I, I and all I that kind of stuff. About that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, about that. Yeah. So, what do you think? I mean, we've, we've got the end of lockdown is in sight mm -hmm. fingers crossed are you starting to think about what you're going to do and what is going to happen once sort of as you say pubs start reopening and venues start reopening do you have a plan yet as to how you're going to move forward because i assume just because you can take your mobile bar out to events again you're not going to suddenly stop doing no. the cocktail packages are you no. do you have a plan have you thought about what you're going to do with that yet yeah, so I think it's going to, I think it's just going to be about us expanding. So whereas originally we were a mobile bar service, I'd say we're now more of a organisation where I'm looking to add further, I'm looking to come up with more ideas and just add to what we're doing and then branch out and expand in that way where we'll have maybe a couple of different avenues. I think it is, 
potentially in the future looking like I may have to kind of start to hire staff and things like that. Um, I, until now, um, I've had loads and loads of help from family um, mm. and they've kind of helped me get started. But there is going to be a point where we have a very, very busy wedding season and I, I assume and I hope that there's still going to be a a kind of um, market for this and a, and, a, and a want and a need for for what we're doing as well. Um, so yeah, it's it is kind of de- these these definitely aren't going anywhere. This is this is here to stay, um, and I think we've managed to sell so many in such a short space of time as well that even in the lockdown, I can afford to kind of lose so many sales, but still have such a nice amount of sales if 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 it continues um, while still concentrating on our original plan, which is to do weddings, events, festivals, things like that. Have you started seeing any? Um bookings start to come in now are you actually promoting the event side of things yet or are you yeah so I, hold I, off until you know what's happening i've started to because of the english um announcement i've started to kind of dabble in it in terms of just remind people that this is actually what we do because a lot of people a lot of our followers and a lot of things like that don't actually realize that that's what we do um and that we have these big green horse box bars um that we <laughs> that we can just pour pints from a pump in um so yeah, I've kind of started to, to engage back with that. I've, I've started to talk to our couples again. Um, some of our couples before the more recent announcements have postponed until 2022. Um, but there are now some who post June and July, which is when I think things, fingers crossed, are starting to look more more normal. Um, then we're, we're going to be getting in contact with them now in the next week to just organise how that will look and what they're like and things like that, which is nice because it's, it's nice to kind of go back to, to what we had originally done. But I still, I do really, really enjoy the whole putting these packages together and delivering them and things like that. So I'm lucky in that respect. I'm, I'm kind of got two avenues at the minute. Mm. I'd like, to, I'd like to get three or four, and or five, and, and continue to kind of all link it in with a similar thing but slightly different. So that's the plan going forward. But, um, but yeah. Have you? Um, I was just sitting here thinking. Have you ever? Have you thought yet about doing it as a subscription box where people could just have a cocktail? box delivered once a month and then they kind of have a different couple of have you ever thought about doing that yeah so we do i actually do do that um there are we have we have got a, a kind of a subscribers list i don't it's funny that's one thing i i need to concentrate on with my advertising is to get that out there a bit more um because i don't think enough people are aware of it i did we started with it and it was like a two month kind of no obligation thing mm-hmm. um and from then we've still got people now who subscribe every month um and they they continuously provide that custom for us but then we also get people who were originally subscribed kind of never resubscribed but they still seem to have cocktail boxes every single two weeks or every single three weeks anyway um so i do remind them of that sometimes but um it is yeah that's something that i i'd like to go down because i know there's there's bigger companies such as the craft gin club and things like that who have these big kind of um, national subscription services but i have had interest that people would like to support a more local subscription service um, mm. and i do think we also provided a good product so i don't think that if they were to come away from a more national business that they would be missing out on the quality of of the product either no because i've seen obviously i've seen the, the the images of the products that you've got and your boxes and they do look they're very unique the way that you've got it laid out and you know, it's not it's not it's not just a bottle of gin and some tonic yeah. and some Angostura bitters or something like that. It's yeah. very well thought out and it's it's it, no, they look beautiful. Um, and it's it is really something that it is different, isn't it? It's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's it's it yeah. is different. And that's 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 really good. What have you got a, a five year plan? Have you got a big vision in your head? I know you say you want to obviously expand and maybe have different product ranges and product lines. Hmm. Have you got a massive vision? How many kind of mobile bars do you want to have? Have you got yeah, any no, that in your head? Yeah, I kind of I think like at the minute, so at the minute we've got about I've got access to about four or five different mobile bars. So, so some of these are inside kind of internal smaller bars, but then we've got two vehicle bars. I'd like to get a vehicle bar which I can actually drive as opposed to us towing. Yeah. So that would be different from a horse box. It would be something else. I've not really thought in loads of detail yet, but I am kind of thinking about that. Um, I thought about possibly looking to open maybe like a cocktail bar, but in a very unique way. Um, so either a 
really intimate one which is made out of like a double decker bus or a shipping <laughs> container or something, or something like that or um I think the big plan, if I'm trying to answer your question, because I, I go off tangent, if I'm trying to answer your question, I would like to have a wedding venue myself, but quite a stripped back wedding venue where you bring people like me, people like food trucks, all sorts of things like that. You bring them to the venue um, and it's kind of like a DIY wedding and, and that, that's the kind of vibe that I'd like to go down. So that's the, I think that's the long term aim. And I, I don't think that I'm going to be too far off maybe trying to get the ball rolling with that, if I'm honest. Um, that's, a, that's a lovely idea, because I think that would appeal to so many people. A, yeah. because it would be more cost effective than just hiring, hiring a hotel to do everything. Yeah. But yeah. it also means that people can to completely tailor their wedding to, to be exactly how they want it. You know, they 100%. can have their Caribbean yeah. street food if that's what they want, or they can have pancakes. A yeah. pancake stall if that's what they want you know and that's I think that spot. would yeah sounds like a lovely idea and I think I think I worked so I previously had worked in a wedding venue um and some of the wedding venues are beautiful I'm not taking anything away from that and I'm not being biased because I kind of do go to these blank canvases um with with my own bars where people kind of have brought their own imagination together and, and brought this beautiful little place alive which is what happens is honestly some of the weddings we go to are just absolutely stunning um but it's mainly me working in a wedding venue myself, you kind of see that there is a factory aspect to it, where the one the, the couples have kind of enjoyed their day, and then all of a sudden it's on to the next couple, and it's on to the next couple. Luckily, they don't see that, and I'm really glad, and it is special to them, and it doesn't take anything away. But from an outsider looking in, mm. I, I see how quickly the changeover is, and it's like you're in this building, it's a whole new set of people, but it's the same as yesterday or the same as the day before because it's a set menu, the bar's the same, the drink options are the same, where they walk through is the same, everything's the same. So when you have that experience where you're able to have whatever type of music you want, you're able to have pie and mash in a cardboard box, um, things like that. So that, that's what I enjoy. That's the, and that's my vision, basically. Yeah, less of the production line and more yeah. of the real intimate, personalised yeah. feel that creates that whole atmosphere that you want not that you're just kind of fitting exactly. into somebody else's idea of what a lovely yeah. wedding is yeah, yeah no that sounds it sounds amazing and I'm I can't wait to see how it goes for you in the next few years because obviously I shall see what's happening because you're local yeah. to me and I shall be keeping an eye out on Facebook and Instagram and that kind of thing yeah. and um well done on taking what could have been really let's be honest what could have been a complete wash out of a year for you and you could have just sat yeah. back on your thumbs and said oh well that's it we can't do it um, but you didn't yeah. you kind of turned it around and said look let's have this let's try this and you did and it's been a really big success and I'm really really pleased for you um you. and wishing you every success moving forward and yeah onwards and upwards and when <laughs> I'm really looking forward to seeing a cocktail bus in a double uh, sorry a cocktail bar in a double decker bus I driving know. around Abergavenny I went oh I tell you <laughs> the, the, the idea I got from that I went to Berlin ages ago um I was probably maybe six six years ago I'd say six seven years ago and um I I walked into a we were queuing outside going to this little private pub is what I thought it was and um walked into the beer garden and all of a sudden I just looked to my right and it was just a massive red double-decker bus which they had converted into a um, into a bar and it had all like loads of optics loads of different spirits and there was just people lined up throughout the whole place just enjoying themselves all little tellies music things like that and so good but um but that gave me the idea and I always do think in in cities always give you the best inspiration of what you can bring into a more rural area like I was saying earlier yeah. And that is kind of the example I had there. It's like double decker buses, shipping. I've seen people convert um, shipping containers into these lovely little rustic bars. Um, small, intimate, where it's kind of like exclusive, if you like. But it's, yeah. um, it's it's definitely something that you can bring into towns and villages if you if you sell it right and if you kind of have the yeah. right menus and things like that. So I yeah, totally definitely, agree. Definitely scope and things that I, I want to do, which are a bit maybe outside of our usual box but we shall but see I, I think that's what people are looking for though i think we want, yeah. we're fed up with the same old same old and i think the people are looking for something different something unique and you know hopefully you can fill that void and you can 
grow your business and do really well out of it. So um, yeah, hopefully. That's good luck with it. Yeah. And and thank you so much for talking to me. It's been fascinating. I've loved no, listening I enjoyed to your that. story. It's been good. Great. Thank yeah, no, you. Thank you very thank you very much for having me on. I appreciate it. No worries.